Great Art for Great Lakes. So it's me and Christopher who's on the call as well. And we are all joined together for our love of the water. Um, what we do is commission artists uh, for the year to lead these participatory community um, engaged projects that will accumulate in a publicly installed artwork later in the year in the region. So all of the work that everyone will be doing will be part of Heather's final piece that will be publicly installed for eternity. So very exciting. So thank you for all being here for Love of the Water. And um, I'll hand it over to Heather now. Great, thank, thank you, Alexis. Um, can everybody hear me okay? And uh, I can't see some of the people and I wonder if that's because they just haven't chosen to be, they've got um, a stop video or something. I don't know if we could just say down in your bottom left corner, it might show a little video and you, you could just choose that and then we could see you. Um, but if you can't or it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. If you can hear us, that's, that's the main thing. Um, so my name is Heather Smith and this is my mother Marlene Smith and um, and um, we just wanted to welcome you to our, our workshop here. A call, we're calling the whole project Hooked on the Bay and we're referring to the inner bay of um, where Port Rowan really is but Long Point sticks down into Lake Erie and that creates this really special environment um, and uh, our family has been from there for a long time and so we feel very connected to the water to the marsh and to the water of the inner bay the fish that grow there and um, and Long Point itself really so I wanted to also say what a strange time we're living in and I think it's very interesting you know women have always uh, quilted or knit or crocheted or rug hooked through a crisis and I think in some ways that's been an important um, part of what we talk about uh, women's contribution to the first world war but I'm sure it predates that and I think we're also in another time like that where we're all gonna um, we need something to do with our hands to, to um, in order not to worry. So I think rug hooking is a, is a wonderful um, a way to uh, help with this crisis. We wanted to just introduce ourselves. So mom, you introduce yourself. Okay. Um, I grew up in Port Rowan, but went away to university and uh, studied history. Came back and I run the archives now in a local library. And I've been a rug hooker for almost 40 years. Since I moved next door to a 99-year-old woman in Victoria, BC, who didn't hear. And because she didn't hear, she had learned to rug hook. That's her story. So how she lost her hearing she as a child? She lost her hearing as a child. Wow. Yeah. And she rug hooked, like rug hook, rug hook, rug hook. She never stopped. And she stood up to rug hook. She had a frame on the back of, of press back chairs that she stood up and hooked at. And her, grand, not her grandchildren, her great, great nieces and nephews all brought her old clothing and burlap and she just hooked constantly. On her 100th birthday, we had a party in our backyard and we had all kinds of rugs that people brought back that, that she had hooked. So you like laid them all over the grass? Yeah, we did, we hung wow. them on the clothesline, off the back porch, we had them everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. So that's that's amazing how you started really so um i i uh i have a bachelor of fine arts degree and then i did a, a master's degree in art history and i worked in art galleries and as a curator for a long time and then i retired and moved back home here to uh, i i live in a house kind of between st williams and port rowan and uh, I've always been interested in textiles. My grandmother was a, um, a, a quilter, and I just also, I just love textiles. I buy scarves, I'm addicted to buying scarves. I go on trips and I buy scarves and, and textiles. I just, I, I really fascinated by them. So when I came back here, I started, rug, mom, taught, mom taught me how to rug hook. Oh yeah, Holly Anderson there is hooking. Everybody, don't look at us. Look over at Holly <laughs> Anderson there. <laughs> Hi. And um, so I started rug hooking, and we actually did a project together. Our very first thing was me doing a painting and Mom doing a, a, a rug. So I'll just show you that just quickly. 
So uh, this is my painting, a uh, watercolor that I did. Actually, we went on a trip together out west. And um, so I did this painting of a scene from there. And then, uh, and then mom made this rug of my painting. Here, I'll just stand back a bit. So we have, we have collaborated, um, you know, before, but it's just in the last year or so that I've really started rug hooking. And, uh, and so then I'm really relying a lot on mom's knowledge of how to do things and, and um, all of that. Okay, so uh, we could um, start with how to hook. I thought, you know, a lot of times when you watch YouTube videos about how to do things, I always find it a bit frustrating when people don't just get right to the point, kind of. And so I thought, well, right at the beginning here, we'll just really go into how do you hook. Um, and so we have, um, we're both just gonna show you how we hook. And then also we're gonna show you a little two minute video of um, Deanne Fitzpatrick, who some uh, of you maybe don't know, she's a Nova Scotia woman who is kind of like the guru, I would say, of Canadian rug hooking. She um, has a, a shop and um, she also makes videos. So on YouTube, you could watch lots of things of her. She also had uh, just a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, a great Canadian rug hook in, mm -hmm. like everybody could at the same time be rug hooking across Canada. So there were uh, thousands of us. Thousands of people were rug hooking on that day. So anyway, we're going to show you that little video, but first we'll just try to also show you um, how to rug hook. So, um, so you need burlap and a hook and a little strip of, um, of wool. And I'm going to stand up. We thought what we would do is mom could do it sitting, show you, but I'll try to also hold my stuff up to the um, camera so that you can see. So you've got something written or drawn on your burlap to start. And I don't in this case, it doesn't matter just to show you, but you start from the front with your hook, go down through a hole in your burlap, and then you've got the bottom, so I'm kind of showing you how it looks there. And then you take a piece of your wool. In this case, it's a quarter inch wide strip of matted old blanket. And you're gonna hook it onto your, your hook. And then I'm just turning it over because I'm gonna pull it up through um, the top. Now, the very first time that you when you start a, a, a piece of um, wool, you, you pull it all the way to the top and then kind of pull it down so you've just got a little, maybe like a quarter or half inch piece sticking up there. And then you choose, are you hooking? Yes. <laughs> oh, you've already hooked? <laughs> Look at that! So, Mom, okay, very quickly, Mom is <laughs> made this I'm piece. almost the end of my row. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to turn. So then your next, your next um, thing you do is take your hook again and put it down. Now in this case, with the thickness of wool that I've chosen, I could go the next hole or two holes over. So in this case, I'm going to go two holes. That kind of just depends on your choice and also the thickness of what you're doing. So I've gone back down through again. I'm grabbing my, my wool again and I'm pulling it up. And this time, I just make a little loop. So can you see that? My hook is still attached and I've pulled up and I've just got a little wee loop. How are you doing there, Alexis? Does that look right? Yes. We'll just do another one while you're watching. So here I'm just gonna stick it in and pull it up again. So you just kind of go along like that. Um, but let's try watching that video if you, if you don't mind, Alexis. We'll just try, this is just two minutes of Deanne Fitzpatrick and I think you'll be able to see really well. Um, so that would be great. Have a whole bunch of fancy needles. All you That's her, is... we can hear it. Oh, good, okay. A pair of scissors a piece of backing, which could be a linen or a piece of burlap, and some wool cloth. 
I you use can't it. turn it up any. For everything, it's just a fine hook. And basically, I take that strip of wool, the white that we just cut up, and um, I put the um, I put the wool wool through my fingers, the strip of wool through my fingers. This is on a number eight cut. And when I was a kid, I used to crochet. At, or if you've ever knit, it feels very similar to that. You're just sort of threading the wool through these two fingers, and you're sort of holding onto it with your thumb. And I put that hand underneath my frame, and I hold my hook like I would hold a pencil. And I put my hook down, and I'm catching the wool, and I'm lifting it up. And I bring my end to the surface, and I bring it up about two inches. Put your hook down, and you almost wrap that wool around the hook. So I make the hole nice and big, and I slip it up through the hole. Sometimes people try to pull it up and then they get it caught on the linen itself. What you really want to make sure is that you open up that hole. Sometimes you can even turn your hand in a little circle, open it up nice and wide. It's the difference between getting through a closed door and an open door. So you just got to open it right up. So you're hooking along in a straight line and on this window I'm going to turn a corner. And all you do to turn a corner is just change, follow the line and change the direction in which you hook. Very simple. So I've finished that strip right there. I'm going to clip it off even. I'm going to, when I finish off a strip, I often bring a new strip up in the same hole, and that gives me two strips in there, in the one hole. And then I just keep hooking it along. All you really need to think about is filling in the area that you've outlined for yourself in this style. So you may find it easier to hook in lines, or you may find it easier uh, to move about. So I like to move about. You can hook it any way you like. Okay, that's it. I think, Alexis, we could stop it. So there's a couple interesting things there. She um, was talking about how she hooks in a line, but she likes to hook in a willy-nilly pattern. And, uh, and that's an interesting thing to bring up here is that you can do both of those things. So what do you call the willy-nilly ones? Do you just call it willy-nilly? <laughs> yeah, I do. I don't know. <laughs> so some people enjoy really just hooking all over the place, like not going in a line. It sounds like that's what Deanne Fitzpatrick saying. And I kind of like a mixture of the things, um, really. But anyway, it's just, um, uh, and then what else was I thinking? The thing you have to do is bring the, the, the beginning piece up through the hole, start hooking, bring the end of your piece up through the hole, put the new one in that same hole, and carry on. Yeah, so did everybody that was did new here, that? did you understand that? So like when you come to the end of your first strip, you pull the end up so it's above the, on the top. And then when you start again, you use that same hole. It just makes it tighter really, so it holds those little pieces. Um, and in order to make the holes on the burlap bigger, like just, you can push your, you can push your um, hook in and just sort of give yourself a little more space. Sometimes you need that. So just, you know, it's, it's fine to do that. Um, uh, the, another thing I was gonna say is, so in the kits that we've sent out, we've included um, quarter inch strip uh, matted wool that we've matted. So mostly I've been buying or we've been buying um, old clothes or blankets from the thrift shop or we've just got them in the house here and um, and matting them by washing them in the washing machine and then uh, putting them into cold water so what mats wool is the change of temperature so uh, and agitation so we just mat it until the little you can tell that the it's all very densely together so when you cut a strip you don't get little furry bits very much um, and so the cloth is very dense and that makes it good for rug hooking because when you pull it through it doesn't all pull apart because it's matted together. You can also use yarn though and I in the kits I did include some yarn for people because often in the thrift shops or in you know knitters or weavers collections you've just got these extra balls of or little bits of of yarn. And so you can certainly use those for rug hooking as well. 
um, I just talk about the materials that we used. Actually, you can hook with wider strips or you can hook oh. with narrower strips as well. Yeah. I find three ply wool, if I'm using yarn, is ideal, but some people like two or four ply, so. And you could double it up. So if your yarn that you find, you know, is too thin, you could use two pieces and even just sort of twist them together as you go. Um, uh, you know, there's, it, with rug hooking, it seems as if really there isn't any rules and the, and the um, style that you choose is a signature almost of your, uh, of yourself. So there's some people that are pretty, very beautiful rug hooking that's really rigid and straight and flat. And there's my rug hooking, which is much more Lucy goosey frankly and now uh, with different sizes and different thicknesses mums is i think as she has become more experienced her rug cooking is more uniform and flat just because you can actually accomplish that whereas a beginner more beginner rug hooker you just have more um uh, your your style of how you hold your hands and what you do with the hook, I think changes more because you're just not as experienced. So really there is no kind of, you know, right or wrong way. Um, uh, I think the other that. thing is the frame. Oh yeah, some people use a frame and we don't use a frame. Mom did try it and then didn't find it. I just it. feel more relaxed if I'm just sitting in a soft chair, holding it on my knee and I've learned to to kind of grab the burlap, I don't know how I do it exactly, and then run the the piece of wool behind my thing through my two fingers and grab it that way. So I don't know. I just find it very relaxing to sit softer and not have to sit up straight at a frame. Yeah, um, and so then because I've learned that way, that's what I've been doing. Actually, I, <clears throat> while I've been rug hooking just recently, I've been sitting in bed at night listening to audiobooks on Audible and, uh, and rug hooking. And it's, I, I, I love it really, but I couldn't do that in, um, with a frame. So, you know, people do it all different ways. Coral, you obviously, you use a frame. You mentioned to me that you were, you took the little kit we made and put it on a frame that you had that it is frames I, I don't know hey can you if you can hear me and uh, you, you get that question just put your hand up if you're a rug hooker and you use a frame all the time nobody nobody maybe they there's a Thank delay you. kind of in the questioning maybe um okay well we'll just carry on all right i want I oh, find that, that you can use a, an embroidery hoop if you have a small piece, like, like the six inch one. Yeah, the yeah. embroidery, the, the frame I'm using is actually an embroidery frame. And I find it, oh, yeah. it, it helps hold the, the material stiff so that you can, uh, I find it easier that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, oh, sorry. Joan, were you going to add to that? Yes, I use a sit-upon uh, rectangular frame, and uh, I'm not sure if she got her mic open or not, but she uses a, uh, a lap uh, wooden frame as well with gripper strips on it. And I started using that because I was needed using that because I was pieces, so the frame was easier to hold. The frame was easier Yeah. Yeah, if you have a big piece, it's you, you end up getting a lot of it in your hand in order to hold it so the frame would help with that. Um, I was thinking though for this project because it would be beginner rug hookers, every all style of rug hookers, that we would just go without a frame because it's the very simplest thing really. And also we would use burlap which is the very least expensive material and lot but lots of rug hookers use linen and but linen I find it's less flexible it's I think maybe harder to learn with linen because it's less flexible um, and it's more expensive so oh, I went to linen when everybody said burlap would wear out too quickly and all that kind of thing but I've gone back to burlap I like it best. Yeah. So we actually bought um, some of the burlap that we are using came from Lens Mill store in Port Dover. And, um, and you can't just go one time because they might not have very good burlap. Yeah. So, so yeah. Bur yeah, burlap comes all different. Sometimes it's beautifully straight and nice, like it's been made 
you know, by burlap craftsmen. And other times it looks like it was made by little kids or something because it's all wonky. So you need burlap that just looks straight on the bolt, like just so that you can tell that it's, it, and regular holes, you know, sometimes the burlap is made maybe even for landscaping or something and it's just the holes aren't very regular. I also bought some burlap sacks that were for importing um, uh, uh, coffee beans from Guatemala. And um, I bought those in St. Thomas at this um, Las Chicas. It's a, it's a really nice business where they import coffee and roast it there. And the burlap sacks were $2 each. And, and some I picked through them and some of them were beautiful burlaps. So, you know, you can get it um, inex relatively inexpensively and e easily. So then we also wanted to talk about um, the wool or, or yarn that we use. So, um, Heather, um, yes, sorry. Sorry, I just wanted to ask a quick question sure. um, before we go on to the next step. So, I just did my first strip. Um, and wow, I'm just. Great, beautiful. Oh, oh, thank you. I'm glad it was. <laughs> that part's okay. But I'm just wondering how to, uh, if you could go over how to end it. Like, I just have the, um, the end at the back, um, just a oh, single. Yes end is that do you just start with the next yeah, string no, in the just, same way or oh just pull that in pull that end up to the top yeah so right through yeah like put your right hook down. back down from the top back down and pull your end up right so that it's sticking top. up okay and then and then uh and then get a new strip mm-hmm and stick your your hook back through the hole that that end came through. Okay, so it will just naturally kind of like create You're a loop. Have two things. Yeah, the tension will kind of hold them in there, and okay. you um, can just leave it like uneven at the top and cut them all off later. So at you know whenever you want. Um, actually, it's been interesting. I've come to my mom's house and her she's working on a on a proper rug like for the floor and the ends are all sticking all up all over the place and I realized that you leave them I do. till the end to cut and I cut like every half hour or something just because I like how to look back and see how it looks nice kind of so mm -hmm. I imagine this is a thing that people just do how they want you know mm -hmm. so but anyway so you pull it back up through that same hole and then you just go along rug hooking again till you come to the end Mm -hmm. And you can have pieces of wool that are, you know, this long, and then it takes a long time to get to your end. Or you could have little wee stubby pieces, like you can use either. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter, really. Okay. Okay, thank you. That is helpful. Okay. Um, so yeah, can I have really a question hard before hard you go on? Wool you're going to Just, use. Oh, sorry, Julie. That's okay. Hey, Julie, did you did have you a question? Have a question? So yeah. So that means you actually have two ends sticking up, right? That's right. Like yes. if you yes. start with the, with the piece up and then you're finishing with the piece up and then you're starting again with the piece up. So one hole has two sticking up. I just want to be clear about that. Two sticking yeah, up right. ends on the, on the right side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. that's, that's right. right. Um, and, the, and the overall, the tension of everything pushing will hold those ends in and um and so that's why you do it through the same hole i have a question um, too if i may hi amanda hi sure. um so when i'm pulling up my whoops oops you lost your sound oh, sorry i just accidentally muted you should be good now <laughs> okay okay um, try again amanda you okay. went quiet there for a minute when i'm pulling up my loops how high should they be? Like an eighth of an inch or quarter inch or half inch or what? The um, rule of thumb is as high as your piece is wide. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if so you're, you're, you're using, using a, a quarter inch um, strip, you could pull it up a quarter, a quarter inch. inch. And then, you know, if you're using a real mishmash of different things, well, then you need you to pull just... them up to that same level. Um, okay. But if it's very, consistent what your strips are then that would be kind of the yeah, rule of thumb yeah. actually i'm going to show you some pieces that rug hookers here have done and i notice how different they are some people just pull it up barely at all and other people have quite a much softer surface to it by you know um, so really surface. it is up to you you're trying only really just to cover the burlap you don't really need 
Um, uh, but the, yeah, the rule of thumb is the, the width of the stuff is the height that you would, you would pull it up. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, any other questions while we're just doing that? I, okay. Actually, my cat okay. just my cat um, just so made a to... <laughs> my cat just made a little bed on my pile of wood, wool here. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, nice. Yeah. I thought that would be cute to show off there. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's great. So, um, what do you, I want? I wanted to talk about the materials. Can we just okay hooks? I wanted to talk about hooks just briefly. So we um, for this project, I bought some hooks. Um, and, uh, and they cost, uh, they were just regular hooks, not fancy. Like you can buy ones that have beautiful walnut or cherry turned handles, um, that cost $40 or you can buy ones that are around 10 or $12, something like that. And that's what, what these are. Um, and if you're going to use, uh, uh, quarter inch strips of wool, like we mainly are, then this, um, hook that is three, the hooks are all numbered. So the, a 3.5 or a four hook works well for that size. Um, but you can experiment actually. And I found when I, I had been using a, an antique hook, an old hook, and, um, and I thought I really liked it. But then when these cheap hooks showed up and I tried both of them just to see what worked, I really liked the 3.5 hook. I, I like it a lot. You use an I hook. use an antique hook. Then I'll just put it's, it really it's, close. It's bone on the handle. It's a bone handle. And but see how the shaft of it is wider at the top? Yeah. That opens your hole better. Yeah, here I'll show you my old hook too. See, it's um very like that too. It it really widens out, which a hole when you put it through the burlap, it pushes the hole bigger. Um but the end of my hook is very small. I think it would be better for just yarn or finer work. Whereas this hook, even though it's just straight, and it's the one that we're in, was in the kits, um, it's just straight, but the hook itself is bigger. So it hooks on to a quarter inch piece, you know, quite well. So, I mean, you might just, if you're just buying a hook or you're just thinking about this, you might realize really that, trial and error plays a part in finding the hook yeah. that's kind of right for you. Um, but a rule of thumb is that the 3.5 or 4 hook works very well with quarter inch cut strips of, of wool. Um, and, and then I just wanted also to mention about matting wool, which I did just talk about, but I, I, for me, I liked the idea that rug hooking is a recycling project, that you can take um, uh, wool clothing or blankets that are worn out or, or have been matted, you know, how a wool sweater that you love can by accident end up in the <laughs> washing machine and, um, and it becomes matted. Well, that can be part of your, of your rug hooking materials. And I love the idea of that because rather than, you know, every time you see that sweater, you feel kind of bad, like, oh, that was a, you know, a mistake and that was an expensive sweater and I screwed it up. You could put it into a, a, a rug or a rug hooking piece and then feel good about it. And I, we are both very interested in history. And so one of the things I wanted to show you was this is a piece of, of wool cloth that is matted and we are gonna use it on Harris this rug. Tweed. It's Harris tweed and it was the coat that my dad wore when he went away to Queens University in the early 1960s. 1958. 1958. <laughs> so uh, I love the idea that it incorporated into these rugs. Not only is the, the subject matter of the rug important, but it can be that the materials that go into the rug are also important, which is very like quilting. I know that my grandma who quilted all the time, you know, you could look at a quilt that she made and there would be a story about a number of the people Pieces. It would be the remnant fabric from making a dress for, you know, my Aunt Janet, and, uh, and that would be in the quilt. And then she would tell me, her granddaughter, oh, that's that fabric from, you know, Aunt Janet's dress or something like that. Probably mostly Aunt Carol's dresses because she, <laughs> she had a lot of clothes. <laughs> anyway, um, so I love the idea of that, of incorporating the history into the, the, the piece, really. 
Uh, so I wanted to talk a bit about, bring up some stories about the bay and show you some more of my mom's rugs. So um, here, I'll just, I'll just it's okay, mom, you just stay there. <laughs> so, um, so this is a rug. I'm just gonna get it, you're fine. I'll just get it centered here. So this is a rug that mom did, you tell. Well, it's my mother's house on the bay and we were living in Victoria at the time and I wanted to send her a rug for Christmas present. So I said to my husband, draw me grandma's house, mom's house. Well, this is what he came up with. It's as if he was standing on top of the garage looking at this house, but it gives you a lot of view of the bay the great big mulberry tree in the backyard, the little cherry tree in the pear point, tree. Point at the things. No, no, on the rug. You can oh, turn. on the rug. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the, the, the peach tree, the cherry tree, the mulberry tree, the house with the golden windows. We used to tease them that book about the golden windows, a children's book. And you can see a fair amount of the bay. That year, mom reported on these swans every time I talked to her. So they were outside her window all the time. So, so, the, so there was white crazy. swans. She was telling about these swans that had hatched in the marsh that you could see from her house. So there was white swans and then there was one, one black, black one. one. He doesn't show up very well, however. So uh, a number of rugs um, that mom has done are about the bay. And uh, this one, whoops, is upside mm -hmm. down. This one, shows actually Long Point, which is similar to what we're planning for this rug project. Can you point at Long Point So there? this is Long Point coming down around. This and is the inner bay here. And Turkey Point. Sorry, it doesn't go as far as Port Dover. And Port Rowan is hidden behind the duck and the goose. And here we are at Heather's house. Right? Yeah, right yeah. about there is where I live. And you can yeah. see um, the lighthouse at the end of Long Point is at the end of you can see the white building there. The lighthouse on our project is going to be much bigger. Here, I'll just show a couple more. So um, this one is of the, um, this is of the, upside down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is of the uh, um, boat houses at um, uh, Port Rowan Harbor, where my grandfather, Spencer Smith, ha ran the gas pumps. So he sold gas to boaters at, at this dock. And then he also had a, one of these boat houses, just point roughly to where um, the Gertrude would have been, right in the middle, kind of. <laughs> okay, that'll do that. <laughs> And so he had a boat called the Gertrude, which took out fishing parties onto the bay, and um, and he kept it in a boathouse that's right about where that red one is, and um, and so all the time I was a child, we went out fishing on um, on in on the Gertrude, and then prior to that, his father. So my grandfather's father, my great grandfather, he had a boat that he built with his brother. Uh, who was Jim, well actually probably three brothers, Oscar, Jim, and William, built this boat called the Skip. And it was a fishing boat really. They went out into the bay and the outer harbor and sometimes the lake probably. They went right across the lake in it. Yeah, they went, they had a race. They mm -hmm. won a trophy um, with this sailboat uh, going across to Erie, Pennsylvania. The trophy was from the Port Dover Yacht Club. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was a big coup for some Port Rowan guys to win the trophy <laughs> from the uh, Yacht Club. So, um, so the thing is, a lot of my mom's rugs and this project kind of are, um, they're really talking about history. Yes. So they, they both have history in the wool itself, as well as the subject matter of oh, the, the rug, rug is history. So that kind of led us to dream up this project where we would make a rug that's kind of four times the size of those that would go in the library, we hope, in Port Rowan and would talk about the history of, of the bay. So how we're going about that, because of 
the pandemic, we all couldn't, we couldn't meet. What my plan had been was we would like meet in the church basement or something and invite rug hookers to come and you all would have come and helped rug hook. But because um, we can't um, all meet, then we broke the project down into these little squares. So now I wanna look at the little squares. Okay. So um, we, I've got some of the little squares are back. So I just wanted to show you and actually mom hasn't seen some of these too other than the ones she made or I made um, so here I'll show some and you show some and we'll just look at them so this this have a mallard a mallard and now I, I drew these uh, images so this is mainly a perch um, but actually some of them look a bit like a sunfish and it doesn't matter how they look it's totally good but I have a sunfish story that I wanted to tell that one looks quite a lot like a sunfish. Like okay, so when I was a little girl out fishing on the bay in my grandfather's boat, if I caught a sunfish, my dad would throw it back. And the sunfish are so beautiful, and I was always kind of disgusted. Like, why do I always catch sunfish, and why don't we eat sunfish and you know why why did we throw a little complaint that nice? I like that. yeah i knew yeah. you would yeah 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 um that's franz so oh, hold okay. it. this is fran here it's fran okay, this one this one is, i like that yeah it's very nice this one was made um by eric uh kathy and ruth matthews and they were just brand new rug hookers first time they'd ever uh ever hooked i told them that their their burlap looked a little distressed along the edge just because they pulled out a lot but <laughs> yeah. they did accomplish they got it done so yeah that them. brings up an interesting point actually you can pull it out and redo it anytime you like and I, it often happens actually where you i'll do it i i put a line in and then i don't like that color or i don't like how thick it is so really it's a very fixable there's another mallard yeah another mallard yeah so we kind of got um ducks or fish for the, the, so these pieces are gonna be on the top and the bottom, and there's 48 of them. It's kind of a freeze, like a, in art history, there's a Greek freeze is kind of what we're doing, but um, uh, this is a, a landing mallard. Okay, let me just, if I go closer, can you see the color? Oh yeah, you get the color really good. Okay, this is another landing mallard. Yeah, this is interest this is mom and I so we both made these and they're the very same what was drawn on the wool is the very same but you can see the the differences the choices of color the thickness of the line um so you know it really there is no rules about it and I outline mine and Heather didn't I yeah. think hers is more successful this one is another one of the perch doing water is very interesting and kind of a I mean you know it's it's um it's hard to make water in wool, with wool and um and so we've done a variety of different things here to represent water some people ignored the water entirely yeah this is sort of a folk arty one that i made that really doesn't deal with the water or sky or anything uh, you know which is fine a oh a swan we did do some swans as well Another fish. fish. And we're just about to the end of that. Just here. about to the end. Yeah. Um another fish. And that's a nice one too. Oh. I don't like this one very much. I made this one and I got to work on it. I, I, I don't like the head and stuff. So I'm going to rejig this one a little bit really to, to fix it up because I'm not so happy with it. Um, oh, and then right in the spring here is when pike are fished in the bay. And, um, and so we were talking about pike and the problem is pike are a long, narrow fish and they don't fit on a six inch where. So we broke the rules and made a 12 inch, so six by 12, these will still fit with the freeze. And then my dad actually drew, well, I looked it up on the internet, but then dad didn't like the pike very much. So he <laughs> redrew the pike. So, uh, so this is two pikes swimming in the bay. And then this is um, another, another one. Yeah, my grandfather said that his favorite fish to eat was pike that was fished right first in the spring when there's still like snow and ice around and the the ice is out though 
And, um, but in the marsh, you could fish for pike. So anyway, he thought those were the best fish. Look, Holly's showing us one. Oh shade. yeah, Holly. Oh, oh there. Another, do you, you want me to rip out the outside and put a dark border? Yeah, I kind of would, yeah. if it's yeah. okay. You don't have okay. to, I don't think you'll have to rip if you just go really tight to your edge and yeah. just put a dark yeah, border. Yeah, because they're turning out okay. different sizes by a quarter of an inch or so. Yeah, we've got so a little okay. variation, so yeah. that'll be fine, yeah. A dark, okay. oh, that looks beautiful though. Good. <laughs> it's chaotic. Well, the back looks pretty crazy. <laughs> the back, I know. On a really experienced rug hookers, the back is, it's just like the front. Yeah, and that's right. And on people See, learning like me, there, this there's... This is the back, and this oh. is the front. They're Can you hold the back up a yeah. bit more? Can you the hold back. the back up a bit closer? Yeah. So that's the back. Oh, it's and there's nice. the front. Right. Now, show actually, could you get... Now, not to single them out. They're just learning. It's totally good. But could you get Eric and Kathy, or Kathy and Ruth's? It was back a ways because the back's got a thing that you're not supposed to do in rug hooking. So we'll just point it out. Really, don't don't tell them they're not here. So it's it's okay. They but um, mind. one problem is you're not supposed to take the wool and kind of like on the back <laughs> jump to a new place. And um, <laughs> and and so there's oh yeah. So the back of this one has a couple, you know, oh, begin. No, no. A no no, yeah, rug hoogie no no's, which is leaving um, the little strip that you're supposed to pull to the front. They've left it on the back. And um, there is, this is a place where, see this, this strip on the back where they ended. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to um, uh, just keep going in the same place. You can cut it and bring it to the front and stop but you're not supposed to do loops like that now the reason really is that the rug would be less durable if it was on a floor this is a project where it's going to go on the wall these this is not going to have really any damage other than possibly light damage but wool yeah. does hold dye really very well um, you know, that's why military uniforms, red military uniforms are dyed wool and they don't go pink because no army would want to run around in a pink wool uniform. So, and that's because um, wool is such a good fiber for taking dye and holding on to it. So, um, so the only thing that this rug on the wall is going to um, suffer from is, is light and really it's, they're very um, light fast. So um, if you're making a rug though for the floor, you'd want to be more careful about that backing so that you didn't have these strips that could pull out easy. So, if you're uh, changing, so then we're just about, oh, sorry, hi. Hi again. If you're changing hi. colors, like after three stitches or something, like how yeah. do you, I don't understand how you change colors, like do you just do three stitches and snip your wool or? Oh yeah. How do you get lots of different colors in one spot? Yeah, you, you could just, um, yeah, go along with one color as long as you like, then cut it off, then smaller. Um, or, um, yeah, like yeah, you can change can it. You see? Any, any so, point. on this one, this is the water. You can sort of see how I, whoops, can you see how I did it? So, there's like, um, you know, a little bit of brown, and then I switched to white, and then I did blue. And then, actually, on this one, I went back into the space between the strips and put a little piece of wool. It's, it's hard to see on here, but it's a, it's a blue um, wool that just had a little sheen to it. So it just looked nice, kind of hooked into that space. But yeah, you just go along, like you could cut the strips as you like, really. So um, you start with a strip, you decide I've had enough of that color, you cut it off, you start another strip. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so we're just about getting to the end here. Um, and, 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 and there will be more workshops. So if you want, uh, we can cover how to finish a rug. Like, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is ironing. Um, when you're first rug hooking, it looks kind of bumpy and all not nice. Well, when you clip off all the little ends and you iron it, so what you're actually wanting is dampen the burlap especially um, because it soaks up 
the, the flat and it's it's much nicer really and I find since I want to see how nice it will look I'm I'm ironing in the meantime but mom you iron at the end I you? do yeah but yeah. It, there's no rules so I'm just saying yeah. that that's a nice way to get it finished and, and some people find their hooking goes kind of ripply that's because you're hooking too tight you can hook looser than that oh yeah it stays in there surprisingly it doesn't come apart yeah, when I was first hooking, I was hooking way too tight and it was way too hard to do. Like just, ugh, you know, you're pushing too hard. So lighten up. If you're first starting, just lighten up. You don't need to, um, uh, you're just trying to cover the burlap. You don't have to, you know, make it too dense. That's true. That's a good point, really. Now, when I, when I iron mine, I dampen a tea towel because usually I'm doing a floor rug. I dampen a tea towel and just press like we used to before steam irons were invented. Yeah. Um, okay. Does anybody have any questions? So <laughs> Gabby is saying that her mic's not working. So usually down at the bottom left, Gabby, there's a uh, mic, little microphone, and if you click on it, it, the line goes away and it comes green. You could try that anyway. Same with your, your video it isn't showing, and you could do that as well. Sorry, Joan, did you have a question or a comment? Well, this has been great. It's been fun hearing the stories and how everybody started. Are you going to be able to show us what you and your mom are hooking for the center or even what you've drawn for the center or are you keeping us in suspense? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see my living room. It's hanging on the wall right now. So I'll and show you the edges. <laughs> so it's quite large <laughs> and my husband hung it on the wall. So my dad is, is drawing it and he's got it on paper on the living room wall and we've made, so there's going to be four panels. So this is, see it's hooked the edge, the black edge is hooked on the top here and the left. And then I have to sew them together. Yeah, so we're going to make four like this. So it'll be, you know, up, up here and then down and so on. And it is a big picture of the bay. So it's, um, you know, long. On point comes down the bottom. The we've got the inner bay, the outer bay, Turkey Point, St. Williams, Long Point, also all the creeks that lead into the bay. So Bacchus Mill is on Denison Creek, yeah. and um and and then there's uh, Big Creek. Big Creek comes out. Big Creek, we sort of <laughs> <laughs> locally it's called. Anyway, um, it comes out and goes through the marsh now and into the bay and then Long Point, and then some features of Long Point, yeah. like the bluff and, and the lighthouse. So we have a Port Dover fishing tug, a sailboat, a party boat, as we call them in Long Point, the inner bay, yeah. and the lighthouse. Yeah. Those, are, those are quite large on it. Yeah, and then these, and then these mm -hmm. go in top a freeze, and top and bottom. So there's um, 48 of these uh, in two rows on the top. If anybody'd um, like to help sew them together in the end, I'd appreciate some help. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> also we can use more help certainly with this middle once we nail my yeah. dad down to drawing it. So um, <laughs> you know, we could just deliver a part, and uh, and you could do the lighthouse or a, a boat or something like that. And um, and then we're and we're thinking that the a lot of this is going to be water. So we've got a plan to make the the lake water rougher and darker blue and then move up into the inner bay where it becomes quite shallow like just you know i mean out in the middle of the bay it's only nine or 12 feet deep or something like that and then there's some bar sandbars so i want to make i want to show the sandbars that are stick out from potahawk point and things like that so you know people that know the bay would realize that we were trying to represent the bay and rug hooking in a in a knowledgeable way i guess thanks um, for that, so I guess that we're kind of, okay okay good. so i guess we're kind of at the end here really unless um can you guys hear me now has, yes gabby yes we can oh. hear you we can't okay. see you but it's okay uh yeah i had unmuted my mic but i think my settings were a little off um but yeah I, i'm just wanted to ask, I don't know if this is like a kind of no-no question, um, but I was just wondering if it would be possible to use crochet hooks, if that's what you have. Yeah, do you, I think this is a crochet hook. Yes, I think this probably starts with a crochet hook that somebody has put into a handle. Yeah, so the 
thing with a crochet hook is you're right. It is the hook is right. It's the handle. It's harder to grab onto a crochet hook to pull it the wool through but you can certainly use it and try it and maybe it'll work just fine but i think that this this where i bought this what they bought is a crochet hook and then they put it into this handle well actually the woman's husband put it into this handle and then she sells them so um so that's uh you know you're right you can certainly okay. use a crochet hook um right, just thank you. a latch hook this is oh yeah latch hooking. latch hooking has another little spine thing that sticks out from it and that's um you know there used to, it used to be very popular i think still that people do it but there's kits where there's finer yarn and and, and you're making a knot with each yeah each and the, you, that's latch hook the other kind of um hooking is uh, punch needle so and that's what, that's what jessica has been doing this punch needle and that's a different thing too the needle the handle has a hole in it hey there she is with one so the handle has a hole in it and the wool goes up through there and the other difference is you do it from the back so you can't like with rug hooking uh like we've been doing you do this from the front you can see the front all the time latch i mean um punch needle you do it from the back but it goes very fast I, it looks very fast to do which was kind of nice really so there's you know um punch needles kind of hot right now if you look on instagram and stuff there's a lot of pictures of punch needle and and uh, stuff i i think anyway when do you any other you questions or anything else yep. oh when hi amanda hi when do you hope to have us give this back to you <laughs> Oh, well, whenever you're ready. I um, I guess I was thinking that I've got some back. I've got actually about half of them back. Oh. And then other people were waiting really for this workshop to kind of get started. So that's, you know, fine. And, um, uh, and um, we've got still lots to do on the middle. So, you know, it's not a huge rush. But if you did want to um, do another one, then you could this one and let us know really just let us know it's it's okay we're ready now to mount them and so we need them but i don't think that that'll be until the end of the summer i think it'll take us all summer to parcel out the sections in the middle and to actually finish all the little squares and and that's fine the this the um, um schedule for this is that we would unveil it sometime in november so hopefully we can actually do that um, I don't know what's going to happen though, so we'll just have to wait to see. Okay. Uh, so we we do have planned to do a couple, uh, some more workshops, and I thought we would maybe do one about dyeing wool, and um, and then designing a rug because we mostly have never used a pattern printed by anybody else we've just always designed the rugs so i thought we could talk about how we do that how we scale up the image onto the burlap and how we plan what to, to make and just and um and also we would talk about how we've chosen to make things that were about our history our family history or the houses we've lived in so it would just be something a focus really is kind of how to design and draw um a, a rug the dying drawing and oh and then i was going to thought we'd do one right at the end about the whole project and showing the mounting and the installation of the and everything so that's the plan right now um about what the other workshops are going to be about and i just want to thank alexis and chris for being so helpful and nice to work with we needed to cancel a couple weeks ago and they were so nice about that and we're just really uh, appreciate alexis's technology help here with zoom this is uh not the first zoom workshop i've been on but it's the first one that i really talked <laughs> so uh so it's really great that you've helped with everything thank you so that's much that's why we're here so thank you for sharing this and Thank you for letting me do this. I hope it's okay. Good job. Can we ask one more question? Is there time? Sure, sure. Amanda's got another question. Okay, so I'm going along like this, right? This way. Yeah. But yes. what if I want to put a bull rush and go up? Do I just turn and make my stitches sideways or? Yeah. 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 It doesn't matter if they're not all in the same direction. 
Oh, no. Yeah. No, no, Actually, no. yeah, I should just I'll tell, tell you. Okay, so some people hook pretty much in a line and other people hook this willy-nilly pattern. And you can do both on the same piece. So actually, I'm gonna show you one uh, made, this was made by Coral, who's here in the, um, in the workshop. So her background here, you can see it, it's all over the place, like it's not in a straight line. But then here on the wing, that's a straight line. And actually in the, in the grass, it's a straight line. So, you know, you, you can hook, see this one, has got a straight line and then the grasses on the on the side are vertical yeah that's vertically. right so they were vertical and then bumping up our straighter lines and also the um the swan itself is all willy-nilly it's all over the place so okay. you know that yeah that part's up to you and you do kind of have to plan like if you wanted bulrushes in you put them in first and then the background would butt up to the bulrushes kind of thing Oops. Yeah, but it pulls out easy and, and there's yeah. no real, nobody knows if you change it. So that's a good thing. Um, Here's our dog needing attention. Yeah, that's right. So okay. any other questions or? Thank Fran? you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heather and Marlene for sharing all of this with us. I'm really looking forward to the next workshops and I hope everyone can join us for those. Um, I'll just be following up with email with everyone uh, with a link to our website where you can uh, keep an eye on the upcoming workshops and our social media if you want to follow along there as well. And also a link to an exit survey that we have, which really helps us with Waterlution to put on more workshops in the future. So if you could take a minute or two to fill out that survey, we'd really appreciate it. And I'll send that through email. So thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Thank okay. you. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks a lot. Good to see you.